Let's get right into it. Number 7. The sun is burning. You look up at the giant yellow fireball in the sky. Let's ignore that it's actually white for a second. We'll get to that. And your brain says, that's fire. That's a huge constant explosion of flaming hydrogen. Well, your brain is a liar. If the sun were actually burning in the way a log or a candle burns, we'd all be dead already. And not just because it's a terrifying celestial object. Burning requires oxygen. Take a breath. Nope. All the oxygen is down here trying to keep your life support system running. The sun isn't engaging in a messy chemical reaction. It's performing a beautiful, high-pressure, high-temperature act of nuclear fusion. Deep in the sun's core, the pressure is so intense that hydrogen atoms are being violently jammed together to form helium. This process doesn't consume oxygen. It converts mass directly into pure energy, unleashing it as light and heat. It's far more powerful, far more efficient, and critically, it doesn't care one bit about whether there's air or not. The sun isn't a barbecue pit. It's a massive, self-sustaining hydrogen bomb that's been going off gently and reliably for billions of years. Think of it as the most powerful, least messy reaction in the universe. Number 6. No gravity in space. Ask any child, or maybe just someone who gets their science from 1990s cartoons, why astronauts float, and they'll confidently tell you it's because there's no gravity in space. Congratulations, you've just repeated one of the most frustrating myths in orbital mechanics. If there was no gravity up there, the International Space Station, which, by the way, orbits at a piddly 250 miles above Earth, would simply float away, leaving us with a giant international bill for a station that immediately left. The truth is, at the altitude where the ISS orbits, Earth's gravity is still about 90% as strong as it is on the surface. That's enough to hold the station the astronauts, and all their freeze-dried mac and cheese firmly in its grip. The reason they're weightless isn't the lack of gravity. It's because they're in a constant state of free fall. Imagine you're on a very fast, perpetually falling elevator, but it's also moving sideways fast enough that you keep missing the ground. The station and everyone in it are constantly falling around the Earth. Everything is accelerating downward at the same rate, which means nothing pushes back against your feet. You are technically very, very heavy, but you're too busy falling sideways at 17,500 miles per hour to notice. Number 5. The sun is yellow. Open up a crayon box. Find the sun color. It's yellow, right? We've been lied to by Crayola and every elementary school drawing ever created. The sun is fundamentally, objectively white. It produces light across the entire visual spectrum. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And when you mix all those colors together in equal parts, you get white light. If you were floating in space, outside Earth's atmosphere, the sun would look like a blinding, brilliant, pure white orb. The reason it looks yellow, or sometimes orange or even reddish, from the surface is entirely due to our atmosphere. Our atmosphere is a filter, and it's really good at scattering the shorter, bluer wavelengths of light. That leaves the longer, yellower, and redder wavelengths to hit your eye, effectively tinting the sun for your convenience. So the sun is not a yellow star. It's just a white star, wearing a hazy blue light-blocking atmospheric filter, like the biggest, brightest pair of cheap blue light glasses you've ever seen. Number 4. There is a dark side of the moon. You've heard the phrase forever, the dark side of the moon. It conjures images of some mysterious, perpetually shadowed hemisphere that we never see, maybe home to a hidden alien base, or a really moody Pink Floyd album cover. And while it's true that we only ever see one side of the moon, it's tidally locked to Earth, meaning its rotation period matches its orbit. It's fundamentally, hilariously, a light problem not a shadow problem. Every side of the moon gets sunlight. It spins on its axis just like Earth does. The moon has a lunar day and a lunar night, each lasting about two Earth weeks. So when the side facing us is enjoying a bright two-week day, the far side is experiencing a two-week night, and vice versa. When we talk about the side, we never see the scientifically correct 
and utterly boring term is the far side of the moon. It's not dark, it's just the side we can't see from our vantage point. We're just dealing with a massive case of bad naming that's led to decades of cosmic confusion. Number 3. Mercury is the hottest planet. If you asked a kindergartner, or frankly most adults, which planet is the hottest, they'd point to the one closest to the giant fusion reactor. Naturally, that would be Mercury to the sun, so it must be suffering the worst case of solar heat stroke, right? Wrong. The hottest planet in our solar system is actually Venus. While Mercury gets cooked on its sunlit side, up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, it has virtually no atmosphere. When it rotates, that heat just instantly dissipates into space on the night side, plunging temperatures to around negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus, on the other hand, is closer to a nightmare version of Earth. It's covered in a ridiculously dense, runaway greenhouse atmosphere mostly carbon dioxide, that's 90 times thicker than Earth's. This atmospheric blanket traps heat so effectively that the temperature on the surface is a uniform, planet-wide 900 degrees Fahrenheit, day or night, poles, or equator. It's so hot that lead would melt into a puddle, and it's hotter than Mercury's hottest point. So while Mercury has the location, Venus has the killer wardrobe, a suffocating, insulating, permanent smog of death. Basically, proximity is less important than having a really terrible heat-trapping gas problem. Number 2. You would explode in space. The moment you're exposed to the vacuum of space without a suit, Hollywood dictates that your body will immediately inflate like a balloon animal, and spectacular spectacularly detonate in a silent shower of human viscera. Because science, except, no. This is another wonderfully over-dramatized misconception. The human body is tough, mostly because your skin is a remarkably elastic and efficient pressure vessel. If you suddenly found yourself floating unprotected in the vacuum of space, you would absolutely die. But it would be a relatively quiet, undramatic death. Definitely no explosion. What would happen is that the water in your bodily fluids, saliva, tears, the surface of your lungs, would immediately boil away because, with no atmospheric pressure, water can boil at human body temperature. You'd get severe swelling, bloating up to twice your normal size, a horrific case of the bends, as the nitrogen in your blood dissolved, and eventually, a loss of consciousness within 15 seconds due to a lack of oxygen, but your tough, resilient skin would keep you structurally intact. No boom. You're designed less like a cheap water balloon and more like a somewhat leaky thermos. The explosion is purely for cinematic effect. The reality is just a slow, uncomfortable process of degassing and suffocation. Number 1. Seasons are caused by distance. This is the ultimate, gold-plated, champion-level space lie that refuses to die. Probably because it seems so logical. It gets warmer in the summer and the sun is hot, so we must be closer to the sun in July. It sounds right. Right, it feels right, and it is spectacularly, utterly wrong. If it were true, the entire planet would experience the same season at the same time. While the Earth does have a slightly elliptical orbit, meaning it is occasionally closer to or farther from the Sun, this distance change is not the cause of the seasons. In fact, the Earth is actually farthest from the Sun in early July, peak northern hemisphere summer, and closest to the Sun in early January. What actually causes the seasons is Earth's dramatic, unapologetic axial tilt of 23.5 degrees. When the northern hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, we get summer. Because the solar energy is more direct and the days are longer, six months later, when the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, the light hits us at a shallow, weak angle, the days are shorter, and we get winter. It's all about the angle of attack, not the distance from the bomb. Your summer tan is is not a result of proximity, it's a result of geometry. 